Rub up your engines! Okay, today we got a 2019 Dodge Ram with a big Hemi engine. The guy's got a noise, he wants me to fix it. He says all these guys, he took it to the mechanics, they don't know what it is. So we're gonna figure that out. And we'll also show you, has this Ram truck held up? Has it had any problems? What could go wrong? And what you'd do if you bought one to make it last as long as possible. We're really lucky on this one. A lot of times, it'll only make the noise at certain times. If you're turning the wheel going 80 miles an hour or going uphill, this one does it right here. As you can see, There it is. No, it's not the barking dogs in the backyard. It's the clicking noise. Now we're lucky here. Headphones will work great with an electronic stethoscope. These things don't cost much. This one was made in China. Works perfectly fine. Although I do have to say, I put quality headphones on. It came with really cheap ones that weren't worth crap. So I got nice headphones so I can hear it a lot better. So all we gotta do is stick it on it as he pushes it up and down. Okay, start pushing. Now we'll put our headphones here. You can really hear it now. It's coming off of the upper control arm here. But sounds can sometimes travel. So I'm gonna go to under. I'm gonna listen to it on the bottom side too. Now unfortunately the noise is going through the entire control arm system. And it's also loud at the bottom. So we're gonna take this tire off. Now first we'll see if it has any play. No play there. No play here. There's nothing wrong with wheel bearing, tie rods, so I'm going to take the wheel off. I found these electric impact ones, this Porter Cable one wasn't too expensive. There we go. So I'll get the wheel off. Now as you can see there's no play, but it's definitely making the noise. Now of course it won't make the noise now because it's up in the air, but these things are notorious for ball joints and parts wearing out, and the only way they're going to make a noise is if they're loaded. So if you get a long pry bar, start prying. Ha ha! Okay, you heard the doing? The spring on the shock is what's making the noise. Now, what I'm gonna do is, I've got WD-40. We'll spray a bunch around it while it's up, and it might quiet it down for quite some time. We're gonna check the rest of it because I learned from my old man years ago. You find one thing, don't think that's the only thing. You gotta check everything. For example, we fixed a lot of flat tires back in the garage. My father say, don't stop just because you found a nail. Put it in the bath of water and see if anything else bubbles because it might have two nails or three nails, right? We're going to check the rest of it, but that doing noise is the spring. And it's been doing it for a year, he said. Guys couldn't figure out what it was. Well, the tire's evenly worn, so there's no real suspension problem, because then it could be cupped wear on the inside or outside. This is a perfectly smoothly worn tire. When they make these things, these springs are just somewhat cheaply made, and they have a tendency of making noise when you push on the car. You can get lower ball joints doing it, so we're gonna check the lower ball joint here. Again, we pry on it. You can see it's solid as hell. If this ball joint was worn, when I pulled on it, it would clunk here because it would have play. And only the weight of the vehicle is going to do that when they start to wear. When they're actually physically worn, you'll see the boot is ripped, the grease will leak out. Then you know it's dry and that's a problem. But in this case, it's just the stupid spring making the noise as you push on it. It's compressed and it's making a noise where the spring hits the inside of the shock. You can see it's dry as a bone if it was leaking fluid and was bad. You'd see fluid, but you can see it's bone dry. I mean, it's only got 30,000 miles on it, but it's making that noise because as it moves, the spring has to compress, and as it does, it's rubbing down inside and making a noise. So you can see here, we're gonna check everything else, but there's no play here, there's no play here. It's just a stupid spring boring. And really, the way these spring assemblies are made, you basically have to buy the whole stupid thing, and it rides fine. We're gonna spray it a little. You could use that AT205 reseal I have, but I ran out, especially where the spring contacts the bottom and the top. Let's check everything else. All the bushings are fine. They're not torn. Tie rod's fine. Power steering bellows is fine. Everything else is fine. It's just that annoying little clunk that he gets where 
This is rubbing. So we got the wheel back on. We'll let it soak a little to work its way in. We'll check out this 2019 Ram. We'll get under the hood. It's got a really nice interior, I mean. Black and chrome, my favorite. Dual sunroof. Plenty of room in the back seat. A lot of power, lots of all the things that people generally want. Really comfy back seats, though. I gotta say. These back seats are more comfortable than the Fords. And it's a short bed. It's a show truck. But underneath, this is a mild hybrid. If you're curious about them, here's how it works. A V8 engine, of course. It's a 5.7 liter Hemi, but as you can see, it's got this strange device on the top, okay? That's the electric motor that helps drive the engine to give it more power. You can see. It uses the giant belt to help drive the crank to make it spin faster. Now, unfortunately, that motor's made in Italy, but that's another story. This was Fiat Chrysler when it was made, even says so. FCA, Fiat Chrysler, on a door, but it was put together in the United States. Now, it's all around gas mileage is about 18. You can see, if you know anything about Ram trucks, that's better than a Hemi is going to get by itself. But of course, it's not phenomenal gas miles by any stretch of the imagination. One, it's a mild hybrid, just a boost type setup. And two, it's a big, heavy truck with a giant V8 engine. It's going to use up gasoline. Behind the back seat, you really can't access it. There is a hybrid battery that operates that system. This hybrid system has a stop and start like other vehicles, which I can't personally stand. But this is a better system because... It's not using a starter motor to stop, start, stop, start. It's using this electric booster motor to spin the engine. It is a better system when it comes to that. They're still, you know, they're not going to get great gas mileage. It doesn't matter what you do to these things. Uh, they're going to make an electric one, and then, of course, it gets no gas mileage. It runs on electricity. They try to make comps and all that, but uh, who knows how that's going to pan out. This is kind of like hey, a little stopgap to get better gas mileage out of a V8 engine and a little bit more power. But really, when you consider the power one of these V8s has in the first place, some of it is a little bit overkill. Now, this motor doesn't create too much horsepower. But it does give 130 pound feet of extra torque for takeoff. And of course, if you are going to tow, which he doesn't, <laughs> it can do 12,700 pounds of towing. Electric motors have instant torque. So when you're pulling a load, this makes a big difference. It doesn't change the gas mileage all that much, but it adds a lot of torque. Not all that much horsepower, but really, this thing's got enough horsepower already. You got a boat, you're not gonna get stuck on the ramp. Of course, with a V8 engine, you're not gonna get stuck on the ramp anyway, so like I say, some of this is a little technological overkill. Now, he's only got 30,000 miles on this thing, and nothing's broken on it yet, so we can't talk about the long life of this Italian motor yet. Uh, we'll find out as time goes on, but like I say, it's kind of a little bit of overkill. And that electric motor does have an 80,000 mile warranty on it, so you got 80,000 mile warranty on it. <laughs> in case it breaks between now and then, they can put another Italian one back in. <laughs> Just realize this, the hybrid battery replacement is like 2,500 bucks, so it's not like your little battery here, which it also has, which costs you 100 something bucks, easy to put it in. No, it costs a lot of money if that hybrid battery goes out. You gotta ask yourself, if you're gonna buy one, are you gonna mess with this mild hybrid, or are you just gonna go traditional? And just realize one thing if you go traditional. It's true for all these Hemi 5.7 V8s. The late model ones like this, they have upgraded horsepower, but they did so by moving the cam. They moved the cam up higher, and it used to be the splash of the crankshaft oil splashed on the camshaft, lubricated it. If you just idle all the time in these things, it doesn't splash on the new ones because they moved the cam up higher to get more horsepower. Some engineering design. The engineers didn't realize, or maybe they thought they did. They're laughing their asses off. I don't know. Now the crank won't splash all the way to the cam when you're idling. doesn't lubricate it. And then you hear a lot of these Hemis having the Hemi tick. And they got the tick because the cam and the lifters are worn. That's a very expensive replacement. If you own one of these, don't pretend you're one of those policemen sitting having a cup of coffee idling your engine all day watching things. Turn it off. Don't do extended idling in one of these. I've got customers with them that never did extended idling. 150, they still don't burn oil. They're quiet, they don't make any noise. But the guys who idle all the time, the engines do get noise and they will wear out faster. So keep that in mind. Don't buy one of these if you're gonna idle. If you really got a vehicle and you're gonna idle all the time, you're better off buying a diesel anyway. Because the diesels are made to idle all day long. They'll run on hardly any fuel at all. And you'd be much happier with the diesel vehicle if you're gonna sit and idle all 
the time. Let's close the hood and take it for a ride. See, it's got a big screen, a really nice backup camera. I gotta say, it's very realistic looking. It's a nice backup setup. The transmission ship's fine because it's only got 30,000 miles. It's got serious power knockoffs, big old armrest, drink holders. It's well thought out. It does have a very smooth power band. There's no arguing that. And with that extra torque, it will take off a lot faster. And this is a conventional two-wheel drive truck. He's not even towing with this thing. It's a show truck, so two-wheel drive is fine. Start on a little drag strip, and we'll see what this boosted system can do with a mild hybrid. On your mark, get set, go! Well, the wheels are spinning. <laughs> It's got that satisfying V8 noise and plenty of pickup. The cars are whizzing by. Now I can feel that the mild hybrid does give that 130 pound feet of extra torque on takeoff. It takes off very smoothly. There's no arguing that. There's a lot of technology, like I said, and it is an Italian electric motor. <laughs> Realize that, but it does work. The man wasn't lying. It's getting 18.1 uh, miles a gallon, even though we're driving like maniacs. Now, prior to this, he had a normal V8 Hemi Ram, and he'd get 15, 16. So, he's getting like 2 miles a gallon better gas mileage. It does work. But it's not really the gas mileage. It's the torque that counts. Because, of course, on the highway, it isn't going to make any difference because you're just driving down the road. It's the acceleration and the deceleration that's going to change. On the highway, you're just running down the road, so it really doesn't make any difference now. Now it shut itself off and turned itself on. You couldn't even feel the difference. I do have to say, even though it's an Italian motor, it's very smooth. You couldn't feel it shutting off, and you couldn't feel it taking off either. It was just like it was a normal engine idling, but the engine was shut off. Then that electric boost motor turned it back on, and there wasn't any lag. You couldn't feel any difference as if you were in a normally idling V8 engine. Now, the one thing the owner says, even though he's had it for two years, he bought it used, he's still not used to the regenerative braking because it's a mild hybrid, it regenerates some electricity, not all that much electricity, but some. And he still doesn't get used to the feel. And that's something that you really have to get used to. Now, this isn't bad. If you get in a Tesla, a lot of them, you take your foot off the gas, It'll come to a stop by itself. And that freaks me out anytime I get in one and drive one. This isn't like that, but you're still going to get a different feel. You got to get used to that. So the owner, who was originally worried about it turning on, shutting off, and feeling weird, this really, you don't feel it. Now, it's only got 30,000 miles. We don't know what the future will bring with an Italian motor, but as it stands now, he's happy with it. His mother has a Tesla, and he won't drive it because he can't stand those the way they come to a stop by themselves he can't get used to it this he doesn't mind the engine shutting up turn on because it is very smooth you can't really even tell the difference now you know a little bit more about these hybrid systems the mild hybrid that are in these ramps italian motor gives it a lot of torque boost a little bit better gas mileage he said they said it would get two to three miles a gallon better gas mileage and it did because he owned one previously that didn't have it that was just a regular hemi v8 and he's getting about two, two and a half miles a gallon better than he did in that. So it does a little bit. And Ram's a car, so he's had a lot of power for towing stuff. He's not using it for towing. But if you're thinking about towing, that extra boost, that's the main thing that I can see them putting it in these things. Is that you got all that extra torque for pulling stuff out. I mean, you got a huge V8 engine to begin with. Big old hammy engine, right? But that extra electric torque for pulling stuff you can really feel the difference. So it was put together in the United States, assembled here, it's an American engine, just has an Italian motor on it. So it's not something that has an Italian made diesel engine that I would say run away from. It's still a pretty reliable engine as long as you don't spend too much time idling. But in this particular model, you don't have to worry about that because it turns itself off when you come to a stop. And then that giant electric motor spins it back into action. So in this case, He'll probably never get lift or tick in this engine. One thing you wouldn't have to think about. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.